That's really good. One thing every time I say it to you. I love this guy. But anyway, um, but we may not know that at the age of 27, Mark has founded a construction company. The business grew faster than his skill sets. And rapidly in his first few years, he became very wealthy, but lost it all in a bad business endeavor. With the help of his father's wisdom and his mentors and coaches, Marcus restructured his life and became a motivational speaker five years ago. He's now a marketing leader who works with clients from J.P. Morgan, PNC Bank, and the Home Depot. Marcus has graciously agreed to be with us here today to talk to you more about his perseverance, mindset, and marketing based on his own experiences. Do you please go for my friend, personal friend, Marcus Ogden. Hello, everybody. How you guys doing? Good. My name is Marcus Ogden. I'm here to... <laughs> Uh, I'm here to talk to you all day about effective sales and marketing, all right? I'm gonna tell you all about my business, how things went in the beginning when I didn't have any real experience in construction and real estate. I really didn't. All I was good at was marketing, getting myself out there and selling to people when I got the opportunity to. So I'm gonna give you some strategies that I know can help you in marketing your business, whatever you're trying to do. Buy and hold, invest, fix and flip, it doesn't matter. If you learn how to market and sell and create value for people through your messaging, the chances of you having success increase greatly. And we're gonna talk about that during my presentation today. So what is marketing? The action or business of promoting products or services, including market research and advertising. No one can buy your product if they don't know you exist. It's not possible. Everyone wants to always have a great product. That is half the battle. If you have a great product and no one knows how to purchase it or that you exist, they are never going to buy from you. So getting your education like you're doing here with Elite is outstanding and it's awesome. But be sure that you're looking at the marketing aspect as well. Because having education and knowledge but no marketing system, you're never going to get your investment back and reach wealth like you want to, like JT was talking about getting out in front of people, selling, advertising, getting your message across, because when people see that message through your consistent marketing, they are much more likely to buy your product. Sales, the exchange of a commodity for money, the act of selling something. Sales is important, but marketing must come first. You market to get to the sales table to be able to close a sale for your business. Think about your own business right now. What are you doing? Invest, fix, and flip, buy and hold, land deals, whatever you're doing, you have to sell something. But most of the time, if not all of the time, some type of marketing got you to the table to be able to make that transaction. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about three really specific types of marketing you should be doing that I guarantee you a lot of you probably are not doing at this time. But before that, I'm gonna give you a little bit more background on myself and my story and go from there. So you guys know that's me in the middle, that's my brother, that's my father on the left-hand side. So my dad was one of the first African-American bank managers for his bank in Washington, D.C. He was head of marketing and their bond room. So I grew up understanding how important marketing and sales was from a very young age. Our father raised us by himself. Our mother left us when I was eight, my brother was 14. And he raised us to be respectful of women, to respect ourselves, and to work hard. And he gave us every opportunity to succeed, but what he was good at, my father was a people person. He could market, he could sell, 
he would be able to find out what a potential customer and or consumer would want to hear. And that's what sales is all about. If someone tries to sell something to you that you don't need, you probably are not gonna buy it. But if your customer tells you what, you, what they need, and then you give them a solution to that problem, you have a much better chance of closing that sale. So think about that. Every time you close the sale, what type of value have you brought to that client that you did some selling for? And that is how you build a consistent pattern of having success in your own business. Finding the value you can bring to people and give them that value. That was my father. So my father and I went to the same college, Howard University. Why, oh, by the way, I'm from Washington, D.C. So I'm very happy to be here at this time. Uh, so you know, I'm, a, I'm a Howard grad. But anyway, at Howard, I studied business finance and marketing. So I understood what it meant to be able to go from college to the real world and bring that skill set of marketing, how to advertise, how to do it where you're not being overbearing or you're being too aggressive, but you're always being consistent. That's what marketing is all about. You cannot be over aggressive, overbearing, and trying to be very pushy when you're marketing or selling. You will scare your clients away. I call it, you wanna be a farmer, not a hunter. Be a farmer, plant the seeds, let them grow. Do not be a hunter right out of the gate because you're gonna to try to go for the kill and that buck or doe is gonna run away. All right, so be aware of that. So Howard taught me a lot about how to run my own business after the NFL. Now I'm gonna tell you all about my business at this time. So this is me in downtown Baltimore. I was working for Johns Hopkins Hospital. I started my business in my mid 20s. I was 27, well, late 20s. I was 27 years old. I had no idea what the hell to do with construction and real estate when I started, none. All I know is I went to, who's here ever heard of Morgan State? I went to an event at Morgan State, Congressman Elijah Cummings said, there's gonna be a minority in this room that takes advantage of the minority programming that the state of Maryland and DC has, and it's gonna build a successful construction real estate business. So I look at my partner, I said, why can't that be us? Why not? So I said, okay, sweet. So that's so what we did. We started a business. And what did we build it off of? Marketing. I did everything from going to networking events, talking to people, interacting with people, finding out what they, their needs were. That is exactly how we built a business from $0 in 2008 to over $14 million by the end of 2012. I worked very hard to market. And when I did things correctly with marketing and sales, we grew astronomically. But here's the problem. When I got to the point where we had so much success that I became arrogant, I became complacent, and I became lackadaisical, the business marketing and sales took a plunge. And in 2013, we hit rock bottom when I had to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I was working for Johns Hopkins Hospital downtown on Wolf Street. And I took the job, did what I was supposed to do, I marketed hard for it, I closed a $4 million sale that was my first multi-million dollar sale for one project. The problem was I did some extra work for a client that I trusted. Ladies and gentlemen, in business, it is business. Do not trust a client when it comes to money. I am going to sit here and tell you this right now. Marketing and sales is key. But if you are in business and you're doing something on a job site, understand that if a client is going to look at their bottom line or yours first, they're going to protect their bottom line every single time. The company I was working for was a multi-billion dollar empire. 
They're the second largest general contractor in our country. They could have took a $3 million hit like it was nothing, but why would they? I had no contract with them for the change order work. I didn't have it signed off on. I was marketing hard and selling, but because I was doing that 100 miles an hour, I forgot to stop, slow down, and protect myself. And that put me into a Chapter 7 bankruptcy where I lost everything I owned in 90 days. I ended up moving from Baltimore to Carolina. I got a job in marketing and sales. I worked for Merrill Lynch. I have a finance degree. But the problem was, in the marketing aspect of it, I had been out of school for so long, I had forgotten how to actually do a Series 7 test or a 66. So I got fired. Went to another company for a construction, worked in their marketing sales department, started there on a Monday, they closed their shop on Friday. I was fired twice in a week. Yep. So go from an NFL athlete to an eight-figure business owner to fire twice in a week. Oh, and by the way, my wife now, who I just met on Match at the time, we were together for probably about seven months. So you can kind of imagine the, you know, the sleepless nights I had trying to tell my wife, well, girlfriend at the time, that I was fired twice in a week. Didn't go so well. But I was able to rebound and I got a job working for myself as a part as a full-time football coach and I also was a part-time janitor. Now think about that. Think about that. Think about how difficult it has to be for someone in a mental state to go from 100,000 fans screaming to a successful eight-figure young business owner to bankrupt almost homeless, fired twice in a week, and now a janitor. I made $8.25 an hour in 2013, I'm sorry, 2014. That was my salary, along with my football. The only way I was able to get my life back on track was marketing and sales. I was doing football training, that was going very well, but the problem was I had not hit rock bottom in my mind at that time. Being a janitor was a low point, but the lowest point of my life is this image right here. Someone's spoiled milk got on my bare skin at three o'clock in the morning taking the trash out. And here's what happened. That's when I went home, sat down at my office table and said, Marcus, what are you good at? What do you do well? You're good at marketing, you're good at sales, you have a story to tell. Let's be a keynote speaker. But here's the problem. I was not good at marketing the way I had to market as a speaker. It takes a certain type of marketing that goes across all platforms, but I didn't have my content. So think about this, if you're trying to market to somebody, what is your why? why? What is your why? Why are you sitting in this room right now? Why have you invested? Because Elite's program is phenomenal. I've studied it, I've been around it, it's fantastic. But if you don't have a real why associated with getting this education, you are not going to reach your full potential. It's just not going to happen. Because if you don't have a why to push through when you're being told no, when things don't go your way, if you're struggling, if you're doubting yourself, your why has to fuel you. So my why, once I figured it out, was to help people not become bankrupt like I did. Ladies and gentlemen, bankruptcy, being almost homeless, having no food in the pantry, having a couple hundred dollars to my name, that's all it was. We couldn't even shop at the grocery store. We didn't have the money, didn't have the money. It was like food pantry, the hand-me-downs. That's what it was my reality for a few months because I just made a really bad mistake in trusting someone that I shouldn't have trusted. So when I developed the why, it got better. 
But behind the why, you also have to do some type of marketing. Like I told you earlier, having a great product is not enough. In today's society, you must be able to market your product. You have to. So I was not getting anywhere as a speaker. So I said, well, what can I do to market for myself? So it's like you ask yourself, what can you do to help market your business? Think about it. I'm going to give you some strategies in a moment, but think about it in your own business. What can you do to market better? This was my marketing tool. Sleepless Nights was my best-selling autobiography. It allowed me to tell my story to the masses without having people to hear from me personally. In this book, I talk about my alcohol addiction, my gambling addiction, my father's death, who died at 57 of a heart condition unexpectedly. I talk about being kicked out of football because I had an injury, how difficult that was, the transition. It gave me a stool, a object to stand on. So this was my marketing tool. This allowed me to get to the table to complete the sale. So once that started happening consistently, I went from no speaking jobs or very few speaking jobs to speaking for Home Depot on their national stage in front of a thousand people. I now have clients like Axe Advisors, clients like JP Morgan, clients like the NFL, the NBA. But again, I'm going to tell you, I have been at the lowest point you can ever imagine. No food in the refrigerator, almost homeless, nothing. And I'm trying to tell you, the reason my business has turned around is I figured out how to market. I have figured out how to close sales. These strategies I'm gonna to give to you in a moment that you can put into your own business. It doesn't matter what you do. Marketing and sales is not about the product, it's about the people. How are you able to create value for the other person you're trying to work with? That is the key. So here's my challenge to you. Are you willing to take marketing and sales advice to succeed? All right, you said yes, right? All right, so here we go, here we go. Here are the three biggest failures I see in people when it comes to marketing or three things that they do not do consistently and they wonder why they're not getting any results. Number one, they do not create an email database. CRM tools, database, getting your information out to people in one click of a button. For the first four years of my speaking career, I had no email marketing CRM tool. Not one. I would get business cards, put them in a box. That's what I did. I might call somebody every once in a while. Today, I have MailChimp. Every week, for an hour, I put in people's emails. All right? We're going to go over that more in a moment, but I have created a system now of how to do things when it comes to marketing with email database. Number two, not doing any type of digital or social media marketing. Raise your hand. What's your first? Ethan, right? Stand up. So Ethan and I met because one of my coaching clients that I coach were on Instagram. Ethan, can you tell everybody a little bit about what you have, saw, what you have seen on my social media, Instagram specifically, that has made you want to engage me and have conversation? Right, so you talk about, thank you, you talk about not having a professional type of image on your social media. 
Ladies and gentlemen, social media is absolutely free. If you are not utilizing Instagram, Facebook, but specifically LinkedIn, you are doing yourself an injustice. I met Elite Legacy through LinkedIn. I got tied in with somebody else who brought me to these people, now I've been with them for a year. So it doesn't cost you anything. You should be posting on there. It's a free service. The next biggest failure I see is not doing enough networking, not interacting with people, not talking to people, not trying to figure out, well, hey, my name is Mr. X. Hi, Mr. Y. What are you trying to do? What, are your, what is your goal? What are your visions? What are you trying to achieve? Ladies and gentlemen, it is so much easier to build an empire with multiple people with the same vision. People who I see struggle in any type of business try to do everything by themselves. The human mind is designed to do a lot of things, but not everything. It's not designed to do that. You put too much pressure on yourself trying to do everything when you should bring someone else in who has expertise in that arena to create a partnership. So these are the three biggest failures I see in marketing. So now here are the solutions. No email database. Create a routine for business cards. Every week for one hour, I enter people's names and email addresses into my MailChimp software. One hour a week. I'll probably enter about anywhere between 50 to 100 business people's names and email addresses. What this does, it builds your book of business, but it also builds your database. Ladies and gentlemen, your database is your gold mine. Think about that. How many times in business have you done business with somebody that you know or is in your inner circle? Quite often, correct? So this is why create a routine for your business cards. Find ways to enter into software, into data. Get something consistent. Consistently build your network. The next one, share engaging content. People believe on social media that it's not good to share real, authentic content. And in real terms, ladies and gentlemen, the more authentic you are, the more people want to engage you. If you try to paint a picture of perfection, your life is rosy red, everything's gold, no one's going to want to work with you. Because everybody has a problem. Everybody has a problem. The ones who are willing to share their stories in an authentic manner that generates content and engaging responses, those are the people that build a business. So it's vital if you're trying to do some type of networking or build your business for your real estate empire, you learn to use LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and you create authentic content that drives people to want to work with you. And then the last one is step out of your comfort zone. It is imperative if you are going to network with people, you have to be not afraid if they don't want to work with you. You have to step out of your comfort zone and engage. It's not easy in the beginning. As you do it more and more, it becomes easier. And I'll give you a tip. When you're networking with people, Tell them who you are, what your name is, where you're from, and then let them talk. Let them share with you what they want, who they are, what they're looking for. This way, you come across as genuine and as someone that actually wants to help them versus someone that's looking to get something from them. I've learned that when you let people talk first, the walls drop down and they're much more likely to engage you authentically every single time. So these are the solutions that I have found and used in my business and I coach my clients to do the same and they're having success in their real estate business as well doing these things.
Process to succeed in sales. Identify your ideal client. What type of job do you want? What area of real estate are you doing? What job size? What area? What is the ideal client that you would like to work with? A lot of times people go into sales blind saying, well, everybody's my customer, everybody's my client. When in real terms, that's not true. You have to identify the type of client you want so when you see them or meet them, you know that that fits your wheelhouse. So learn to minimize and try to find ways to find your avatar client. Second thing, connect with them authentically. Social media is great for that. Direct messages. Say, hi, my name is Mr. Ogden. You have a great profile. Let's connect. 90% of the time, people will engage you back because you're asking them about who they are, what they're doing, and what you're trying to find out about their brand. So this is why connect with them and find out about them and what are they looking for and what is their vision to succeed in real estate or in real estate investing. LinkedIn has a profile sales navigator and has some uh, direct ads you can utilize to help expand your business as well for very, very cheap pricing. And I use it in my business. Listen genuinely. When people talk, don't look this way or that way. Don't look at your phone. Don't like look to the side. Like really look them in the eye or on the phone. Really just have your senses up. People can tell on the phone if you're listening or not. Because you'll say, well, what'd you say, what'd you say? Like, oh, you weren't listening. You know, and in person, eye contact is huge. In sports, I learn from all my coaches, if you're not looking me in the eye, I can't trust you. Like, I remember, I remember getting beat on a play, I looked at my quarterback, Byron, I said, hey, Byron, man, I'm sorry. He said, Marks, I'm looking in your eyes, I can see it, go to the next play. That's, you know, that's just real. When you look people in the eye and give them eye contact, that means that you are truly engaged in the conversation and you want to know what they're saying so you can potentially help them and they can hopefully help you. So listen genuinely. Create real value for them. This is where a lot of people end up falling short because if someone tells you what they need, as a potential client, you, people sometimes will say, well, this is what I need. Instead of saying, okay, I know what you need, I appreciate you telling me that, let me do some research to try to help you solve your problem. And this is where people have to come to the table and say, if I don't get a sale from this or a partnership, it's okay, I just hope down the line it turns into something more. But the more you come ready to create real value, more times than not, you will get the sale eventually. If you're coming to the table trying to get the sale and push it for the sale, and you're not trying to be authentic, create value, be genuine, people just pull away and walk away. Ladies and gentlemen, three and a half years ago, that was who I was. I was marketing very aggressively, overbearingly. When it came to sale, I was always about, well, how can I get a doll from that person? Today, I'm all about, I plant a seed, I let it grow. How can I create value for them? If it turns into a job, great. If it doesn't, great. There are people in this room who I'm coaching in real estate knowledge. There are people in this room who I've talked to that I'm not coaching. But you know what? If I'm coaching you or I'm not coaching you, I'm gonna talk to you the same way. It's okay. I don't want to be that guy that only talks to people because you're my, giving me money. That's not what it is for me. It's about how can I help you in any way that I can to help you become successful. And the more you do that, the more you end up getting the sale. Just the way it is. And the last one, do diligent follow-up. Always set a policy of how to follow up with people consistently. I tell people all the time, if you talk to somebody on a Monday, 
If they don't tell you when to have a, a follow-up call, try to have it within a week or less. Because if you go past a week, people might forget you, they might be going to other things. A week or less follow-up for me has worked very well. And I believe it worked very well for you in your business as well, no matter what type of real estate you're doing. So if you can follow this process to succeed in sales, I hope and I'm very confident you will get more sales and increase your bottom line and your profitability. All I want to do today is give you all the tools that I have used in my business, in real estate, construction when it was going well, to my speaking business and my coaching business as it's going well now. These tips and processes, I believe, can help you very strongly in your business. Three resources you should use in business for this class, for real estate investing. Number one, REI Black Book. I have coaching clients that have used the software and have gotten great results. It helps you to decipher from wholesaling, invest, fix, and flip, buy and hold. It allows you to put information in and get back a computated response. So REI Black Book from my clients that I know are using it are having great success with the software. Number two, mentors and or coaches. Every professional athlete has a mentor or a coach. Every successful business person has a coach or mentor. Bill Gates has a coach. Steve Jobs had a coach. Tony Robbins has a coach. If you're the guy with no coach, you're at the top level, nobody knows who you are because everybody has one, has a mentor, someone to help you along the way. But most importantly, someone who is accountable to you for your own success. Getting someone to give you some advice here and there, that's great, but that person has no accountability to your success. If you succeed or not, they really don't care. They might say they do, but more likely they probably don't. But a mentor and or coach that you're hiring to push you, that person has a responsibility to you. And that's why I believe when people are in sales, you are a product of your product. The more sharpened you are, iron sharpens iron, the better you have a chance to succeed. And that's just real talk. And the last one is collaboration. I teach all my clients it is better to collaborate with someone than try to do something by yourself. When you go by yourself, most times, not all the time, most times something gets missed. So it's imperative that you collaborate, especially in the beginning. As you're starting your real estate journey, learn who you can partner with to help you alleviate some of the load, all the paperwork, all the documents, all the process, all the information. Elite Legacy gives you so much information and they're supposed to. They greatly increase your chance of having financial success and freedom. But at the same time, if you can collaborate with somebody that's in the program, that's vested like you're vested, it helps you to minimize mistakes and it helps you to maximize your success. So these three things I found are very helpful. REI Black Book, Mentors, Coaches, Collaboration. Does anybody have any questions for me about my real estate business? You know, everybody always kind of starts off not asking questions, and the whole room asks questions. So if he wants to ask a question now, that's fine. Ma'am? That's an excellent, so the question she asked is, what did I learn when I hit rock bottom? What was the number one lesson that I learned? The number one lesson that I learned was inclusion is the backbone of any successful brand. Inclusion means allowing people in your circle or your employees or your partners, allow them to express themselves without fear or judgment. Steve Jobs said his primary job at Apple 
was to create an environment where his trusted employees could express themselves without fear or judgment. That was his number one job at Apple. He said, I got the smart people in the room, but I have to make sure they're not afraid to talk to each other. So I had in my business, my senior estimator, one of my C-level executives, tried to tell me, Marcus, we're spending too much money on the job that bankrupted me. We're spending too much money. We can't catch up. I said, Colin, we got a line of credit. We got this from the bank. They're behind us. Go home, have a great weekend. We're good. He comes in that Monday. He hands me his two week resignation papers. He said, Marcus, if I can't tell you what I feel without you looking at me and judging me and telling me and shunning me away, I don't belong here. And I said, at, well, today I say, damn. Then I said, get out. I was young and immature. He left. Six months later, I shut my doors. He called it. He said, in six months, well, we're going to be bankrupt if you don't stop. I said, Colin, you're crazy. He resigned. Six months later, I'm bankrupt and almost homeless. <laughs> so the lesson is allow people that you trust to talk to you and give you their honest, constructive feedback and opinion without judgment or without looking at them harshly. If you can do that as a leader, you give yourself the best chance to succeed. Yes, sir. Oh, where's one of my clients? What's up, Javier? That, uh, Javier, you want to come on up for a sec? So Javier is one of my coaching clients, okay? So Javier is an elite legacy Hall of Famer that he earned. He worked his ass off to get that. And you know what? We had a conversation and he said, Marcus, I need a coach. I'm operating at 20% efficiency. So now I'm coaching him. I'm going to let him tell you how he had a lot of deals. And now how I'm coaching him, he's having even more success. Javier, the floor is yours. <laughs> um, so I uh, signed up with Marcus, my coach, uh, I guess last year. Yeah. Last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that it was like half, half, uh, half an hour or so. It was crazy until he actually called me and he had to take care of it. So that was pretty neat. Um, but you know, you know, it was wrong. And it's been great for me just because I needed to coach him on business. Even though it's real estate, but I needed to coach him on like construction side of the business. So he was able to help me pinpoint where I need to help. Like right away, it's like the construction process. The project manager. Did I switch this? Did I switch this? He even helped me uh, find a project manager. So that was, that was excellent. It worked out better than the previous three that I had. So he even helped me with the interview. And that was awesome. He didn't have to do that, but he did. That's not hard to program for me. He was like, seven, eight. I want you to succeed. So it's, for me, it's very helpful. I have already got a lot of emails, but I still felt like there's a lot of parts of the business that I didn't know how to run. Right? So that's when Marcus came in and guided me like I was the next end. Right? So he called me on Friday, hey, look, I'm going to tell you something. You guys have any kind of coach, make sure you're committed to do it. Right? Don't just call and then I'll do nothing this week. Right? You guys have to do it. Right? Don't waste your money then. If you're going to do it the right way, don't waste your money. You know, when you're already here, everybody already is committed. So do what your mentor or your coach is telling you to do every single week. And he pushes me, you know, every week. And I got to have a checklist of things to do. I've got to move my ass to get it done. Appreciate it, Javier. So, so my question to you was yeah. if, you have, if your client should be brand new, a couple of deals more Does it, a great question. Thank you. Uh, and my other client, Jacob, you will get to speak in a minute, too. Uh, but no, the answer question, it doesn't matter. If you're brand new, if you've done a couple of deals or an expert, I've been around real estate, I've been around construction, I've been around this process for many years. I took courses in it, but more importantly, I have real life experience in it. When you go bankrupt in real estate, you learn. You learn a lot. 
So I tell, like I told Javier, great businessman, you are missing some people on your team. And if you don't implement this now, you will drive yourself crazy trying to grow to where you want to grow. Because that was my reality. So I've been there and I've done it. So Javier is one of my clients who has had great success before me and now he's having even better success after me because I've worked with him on what I've experienced and I'm helping him avoid the pitfalls that cost me my business and my life and my money. So I want you all to have success in your own right. So a great question, Javier. Anybody else? Yes, sir. The, I'm going to tell you all the time, what I say about myself builds my self-confidence. What others say about me builds my book of business. So find someone that someone that you know or trust can say, hey, that mentor coach has helped me and I believe they can help you too. I'm not up here trying to sell my coach. If wants to tell me about my coaching, that's great. I came up here today to tell you about marketing and sales tactics that I know can help you in your business. That's why I'm here. We're gonna talk about coaching, we're gonna talk about after I'm done. But again, find someone that other people have worked with that you can say, that they can say that person is right for you. So don't take the person's word for it, take someone's referral for it, okay? And my last point, when you build your foundation on excellent service, you increase your chances for success. Not customer service, service. Your product, your timeliness, your consistency. That is your service. Customer is part of the service. So you have an excellent foundation of service, an immaculate customer service to go with it. Your chance of success go through the roof. That's it. Thank you.